My name is John Thompson, I'm manager of Atmos Heating Systems or Atmos Innovations is the uh, uh, innovative part of the company. I've been um, a heating engineer for most of my life and um, <clears throat> we've done some interesting work which I'd like to present to you today. Now let's see if this is going to work or... Wonderful, got it. <clears throat> Um, being a heating engineer, as you'll probably see, radiators on the wall there, <coughs> and a boiler, and I was going around putting boilers in and radiators on the wall, and um, <coughs> I'm driving down the motorway one day, and faced with this scenario, which we all see day to day, and I'm thinking to myself, I fit radiators in houses to give out heat, to heat the house, and try and make that as efficient as possible, and here we are, cars with radiators chucking the heat away. I thought, there's something wrong here. Um, what can we do about it? Which uh, proved to be a rather 12 year long question to find an answer to. But <coughs> realised that uh, in the, we've got 34 million cars in the UK all driving down the road. They use 30% of the fuel that you put into the tank to drive the vehicle and the rest of it, the 70%, is thrown away. And um, most vehicles have got internal combustion engines, as I'm sure you're full, fully aware. So I looked, what can we do to uh, uh, do something about it? Um, looking at it carefully, there's a, a diagram of where all that fuel goes that you stick into your car. And as you can see, a fair bit of it, a little bit goes to driving the car, the rest of it goes out into the atmosphere. Um, vehicle manufacturers have been very good and they have tried to improve things. They've improved engine efficiency. They've reduced the weight of the vehicle. Um, but one of the problems is that uh, exhaust emissions, to keep your exhaust emissions down to a tolerable level, you've got to keep it nice and hot. So if you could reduce the exhaust gas temperature, you could make it more efficient, but you can't because it chucks out all sorts of nasties then. So really, the mechanical efficiency of the internal combustion engine remains in the region of 30%. And waste heat, of course, is invisible. If it came out the exhaust pipe in bits of paper, we'd, uh, we'd all be horrified, but it doesn't. It just disappears into the atmosphere. So what we looked at was can we store the waste heat and use it? So we had a go. So I had to decide whether to use coolant or exhaust heat, but coolant only goes up to 90 and you can't do much with it. Um, but exhaust heat is up to 600 degrees. That's really hot stuff, which is good quality heat. So we decided that that would be the best route to go because you don't have to interfere with anything on the car, you just stick something on the exhaust. And um, so we focused on exhaust heat. And um, if you go along to our little desk in the exhibition there, there's a little pot of PCM, that's phase change material, which is what we store the heat in. And um, <coughs> we can get seven kilowatt hours of heat energy in a 20 litre store, which is enough to heat a tank of 100 litres. So, <coughs> um, PCM, you can get almost three or four times as much heat into the same mass uh, as water. So, it's good stuff, okay? But it doesn't require careful handling because you have to heat it up to about 300 degrees C. However, we've done it, we've put it in the back of a Land Rover, I've been driving it for the past year, and we can transfer the heat from that, and I'll tell you how in a minute. And uh, we patented a safe method of heat transfer because when you've got something at 300 degrees C and you put water around it, you know what happens, don't you? And there's a loud hiss and a bang, and we don't really want that, or at least the average car owner wouldn't want that. But um, since then, we've uh, discovered that you can use this in all sorts of different ways. So you can use it um, on the vehicle to preheat the engine. 
uh, it reduces CO2 emissions and it reduces toxic emissions. However, having said that, <clears throat> car manufacturers being what they are, um, are never too keen on taking up things that cost them money. So um, <clears throat> we haven't got very far with that. It can be used for cabin and engine preheating in cold weather on lorries and buses and cars that often use a separate fuel burning heater. And in cold climates, I don't know if you've ever been to Canada, I haven't, but I'm told that when you park your car, you plug it into an electric socket. Has anyone been to Canada? Um, anyway, if you do, and you park your car, it's so cold, you plug it in and you get heat there. And all sorts of things like ambulances that use heat on board. Motorhomes do it. Um, I even had a lady ring me up who does, goes around dog grooming and wanted hot water on her van. But um, <clears throat> there's the external uses, which is we've identified 31 different applications. Uh, domestic hot water supply for your home. We, uh, we st we've been installing solar hot water systems, which put a panel on the roof and collect the sunshine, uh, energy, and pump it into your hot water tank. Um, you can do the same with the car, just from a different source. Arctic transport, that's a very interesting one. We've had a few inquiries from that. So we've had uh, keeping the engine warm and the battery warm and hybrid vehicles that need heat when the electric motor's running, generator installations where you're chucking away the heat. If you go outside this building, you will see um, the film people. You've got their generator lorry there, which is generating electricity, throwing away the heat and heating electrical elements to give them hot water, I imagine. So places like that supermarket delivery things. So there's a host of applications. So where am I going? You must be thinking. Good question. And I'm still working on the answer. However, that's, um, that's just to show what we've done. That's our Land Rover Freelander and uh, Malcolm Harbour Euro MP came along to come and give us a little bit of guidance on how to get through European law which he said is very difficult. And um, you'll see there that where those two hoses is where you plug in, in here, in the hot water tank, and uh, inside the building, and these hoses plug into the car. So when, when you've charged it up, you park, you plug in the hoses, as uh, our friend Malcolm is doing, and it turns on a pump and transfers the heat into the home. Got it? Yeah. You believe me? There's some looks of disbelief. Here's another application. Uh, we had a, a lot of talks with people. These uh, guys did an Antarctic expedition. Um, and you need a lot of heat to keep warm. And drinking water you get by melting snow can't do by normal means, and they need lots of heat. So they were wanting to uh, utilise that because their biggest cost was fuel, and I think it's something like $40 a litre in the Antarctic, if you want to go there for your summer holidays. <coughs> um, you may have heard of Ranulph Fiennes, Fiennes, Fiennes. <coughs> he's currently trekking across the, Atlant the Antarctic the coldest journey on earth, minus 70, <coughs> and uh, that's the caboose in which, they, which they're dragging behind the caterpillar tractor. Here they have a generator. They called me in to see if we could help them, and um, you can see this generator, and they've got a snow melting thing, and they've got heaters in there to heat up, but they're throwing away the heat from the generator from the radiator, from the exhaust, and then they're burning. They're, they're actually carrying for their six month journey 135,000 litres of fuel in bags on seven trailers. 
So if we could have saved them a few thousand litres, $40 a litre, that would have been a good thing. Unfortunately, we were a bit late to get onto the project, and they wanted it for nothing anyway. So, <coughs> so that's the conclusion. What are we looking for? Um, I wrote in the first line, moral support for to recognise waste heat, because somehow we seem to have accepted that all that waste heat from a car is okay. We can have a 30% efficient vehicle, and it's okay. We've, I come from the boiler industry, we've just had the efficiency legal requirement gone up from 80% to 90% if you've got a condensing boiler, but cars still go away with 30% and nobody's worried. So a bit of moral support is really helpful. Um, but we're looking for partners who we can work with and got immediate applications. We've, we've um, identified 31 different applications, but we can't develop them all. We've got to find one that's going to work and uh, put the money in that. And we're looking for investors who've got a long-term interest in energy efficiency. And if you'd like to get in touch with us and offer us any help, there's the address. That's it, thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions for John before we move on? On the back there. <coughs> How big can it go? Because yesterday I was at an event in which people were complaining a lot about the fact that uh, on one hand, the government wants every single new power plant to have CHP, mm. and on the other hand, it is very difficult, especially in the UK, to retrofit, for example, district heating, simply because we don't have it. So, if you don't have the possibility of dumping the heat of a, of a CHP plant into an industrial facility or a new state where new homes are built and therefore there is district heating, etc., can this be put at the end of a CHP in a much larger way to transport that heat to where, to where it actually is needed? Um, it's certainly not a stupid question. It's a, a very good question. Um, I had one guy bring me up from Hamburg who said, um, <clears throat> we store heat from, I can't remember where, and they put it into containers and they put it on a lorry and take it off somewhere. I think it might have been a crematorium, which isn't very nice. But, um, but they, they wanted to transfer heat um, mobile, you know, put it in a lorry. They actually carry it um, for use. Um, and so to answer the question, how big can you do it? Well, I don't really see any limit. We have looked at CHP and deciding you could put a diverter valve so that because you've got to get rid of the heat. If you don't need the heat, you often need it at a different time, yeah. which is the whole point. Yeah. You could put a diverter valve in the exhaust and then put it into a store and you know store it until it's needed. So I think there's um, there are lots of potential applications with generators. We've had another inquiry from uh, a mobile unit, like the one outside actually, where they they have uh, they go to sites and they want electricity and hot water, but they use the generator to generate electricity to heat the hot water, whereas they could store it and uh, then use it when they need it. So it's uh, it's using exhaust heat when you want it, not when it's produced. Does that answer yeah, your question? Yes. I mean, if there's an inch of time. John, thank you very much indeed. If we could thank John for, for his speech here.